Hi, this is Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to be building a Symfony Ready development server, emphasis on development for uh, using Ansible and essentially everything that we've put together so far. So we've got the, the standard Ubuntu master image that we've cloned, we've got a symphony-dev.local uh, and that's up and running. It's basic at the moment, it's not got the common role on it or anything. We've got 1.25, sorry. So I've added that in as we've seen in every other video so far and we're just gonna go ahead and run these roles against it. So I'm gonna start off with the common role. So just the common role running against symphony dev local uh, and just fire that off in and we'll probably also need to go into um, our host file and just change this up and, and add this in. So let's just, uh, Let's just go ahead and add this one in. So 192.168.1.215 is going to be symphony-dev.local and that should be good. And then what else have we got? So it's just going to go off and install the server basics and uh, sorry, the common role in the background. We've already covered that, as I've said, so I'm not going to go into what that's doing. If you're unsure at this point, then please do go ahead and watch the previous videos where we've covered the common role specifically in quite a lot of depth. Uh, the, the two main ones that I've added in, so uh, we've got the MySQL one, which we covered in the previous video. What you might want to do is have the MySQL server running on the same server as your Symfony server, um, or your Symfony development server. So in that case, it would just be as simple as um, adding in the MySQL group. So I think it's just MySQL underscore servers like that and then having symphony dev local in there which allows you to have everything running on one box which is perfect during development and then you know you can split it off when you go into production split it off onto a different server or whatever it gives you that sort of flexibility now as i said at the very start of this video this is a development specific environment it's not particularly production ready but it does get you sort of 70 to 80 of percent of the way there um, we can see ah, it's just finished that was good timing um, the next thing that we do need to put on here is nginx so I'm just going to set that one going as well and whilst I set that one going I'm going to go through the config for nginx so it's uh, it's its own role uh, it's a bastardization of uh, another role which I found online I couldn't honestly tell you what it is uh, went through a stage of just sort of I, in fact if if I had to guess this one would be from Servers for Hackers by Chris Fideo. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Put the link in the show notes because, uh, yeah, this was built, I think it was built sort of partly by me, partly by sort of taking the config that they that, that was on that site uh, and then sort of changing it up to, to meet my needs. Now, it's a bit rough around the edges, this config. Um, as I say, it's great for development. It's perfect. What I use it for is, um, so you might be sat, in you know in your, your desk or whatever and you have an idea and you think you know what that's a that's a good idea i'd like to sort of have a crack at that and uh, but then you think to yourself ah oh, but you know spinning up a new symphony server is going to take an hour or something and by that time like something else has popped up and you've lost interest or or whatever you're starting to doubt whether it was a good idea in the first place well, if you can use Ansible to spin up a, a working development server in like five minutes or whatever, you, you can get a lot more productivity time going in actually working on your app as opposed to working on setting up the config. And the nice thing about using Ansible in this way is that we're not just cloning an existing Symphony setup that we've set up already. So you can tweak it and customize it as we've seen through our Ansible, um, these videos on Ansible. So there's not particularly too much going on that's out of the ordinary for an, an Nginx build. Um, we're just building it from the, the standard uh, repository. So like, although it's not the official Ubuntu one, it is just like this, the sort of the way that you'd do it if you was Googling it uh, and then setting up some basic config. So this is a, a very, very uh, sort of typical config. Um, we left all the comments in, which is nice. Again, that wasn't me that set that up. I'm pretty sure that's from Service for Hackers. Um, yeah, this H5BP thing is definitely from Service for Hackers. Uh, and then disabling the default site. So that's pretty important. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a, with a, a site break. Um, hopefully that won't happen, but I'll show you what to do if it does, um, which is basically just remove, go, go to that path and just remove that file and you should find that the site starts working. So then we add in our, our site config and this is our custom Symphony site config. So this is just a, a standard uh, Nginx file to get this working. 
uh, nothing particularly crazy going on here might need to change that up to uh, to be the dev environment so I'll like change that off to app dev so if we put that in let's just get started start. Um, updated hosts and I'm not too sure what we've updated in the host file I think oh yeah we put in an extra line break or something and added um, what did we just add there so we set to added to app dev from app star something like that and then we can in fact I think we've just pushed across the these um, the nginx config because we just run through it in that there so this won't take effect but whatever um, it will do when I push that up to the like the live github page and then we're just going to set off the symphony file going even though we've not fully covered off what's happening in this one yet so again we're just 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 the standard nginx uh, in as much as like a, an apache v host it's just the nginx equivalent uh, we're using so if we look at the role for um our nginx setup there's all this stuff in here which could be deleted but the the gist of it is we'll install php composer xdebug fast package manager and uh, nginx so like a pretty standard uh, server build really for nginx but it's done very quickly for you basic site config uh, adding in our username so like www data and then making sure that apache is not running uh, the reason for that is you'll probably get like port conflicts with 80 port 80 uh, the other thing is obviously if you're running this against your own server and you want apache in there please don't run this it's designed purely for dev um, don't run it against a live site because uh, bad times, bad times indeed. Anyway, so we should be able to now SSH onto that box. So SSH code review at 192.168.1215, I think it must be. Uh, jump onto there. So if we jump into var w, uh, let's see. So we've got Symphony dev local and we should have a full Symphony site there built, ready for us and good to go. Uh, I think I've added it into my host file. So if I go to symphony dev dot local, uh, now it's tried to do it through uh, Google. Let's just put that in there. Okay, so no, we're not getting there. Let's just see change directory uh, etc nginx sites available ll. Yeah, so for some reason the default file is always there. Uh, I can't figure out how to remove it as of yet. I don't need a rec uh, re recursive force, but whatever, we'll go for it. Uh, so that should be good. And then we just need to do sudo service nginx restart. Uh, and now if we reload, a bit of luck. Hooray, we've got a Symphony working website. Okay, so we don't have the database as such, but we've got a working Symphony 2.7.3 build in however long it's taken to record this video so it's like pretty quick to get up and running you can now jump on there do whatever it is that you need to do and you're good to go uh, pretty pretty quickly customize that as and um, how you need to but um yeah effectively if we look at the symphony so that's just the symphony um yaml file to to sorry the symbol symphony job and then the symphony uh, role itself is really quite straightforward get the installer um, sort out the installer into like a global location make sure we can run it uh, check if the site exists if if it does then pretty much nothing will happen after that so it's not going to wipe out your directory if you rerun it but if you do rerun it and you do want to go and sort of completely reinstall it first go in and go to your sites so var w do an rmrf on symphony like that but of course that's going to delete everything but if you rerun if you want to rerun this that's what you're going to need to do otherwise if it finds that that directory is already available it just won't run it and um, it won't run this role then set up the symphony site so actually go ahead and install using the symphony installer symphony new uh, set the directory permission so we're all good and then add a git ignore file so that we're we're ready to go I and mean, as i say it's not perfect it's not the it's not the pinnacle of symphony installs but if you just want to get up and running and build a, a quick you know test something whatever it's it's really pretty useful for that sort of setup so hopefully it's it's useful to you uh, and yeah if you've got any tweaks or whatever comments then please do let me know